Invoicing is one of the most important things that you can do in your accounting system to help you make sure that you get paid, that you get paid on time, and that you have a healthy cash flow in your business. And I love the fact that all modern accounting systems have an invoicing module built in the system. So what I'm gonna show you guys today is how to create invoices in QuickBooks Online. If you don't know me, my name is Hannah Smolinski. I run a fractional CFO business called Clara CFO Group, and I love to teach financial technology like this on this channel, Financial Tech Lab. And so if you are a small business owner or a bookkeeper, somebody who's DIYing, or maybe you're trying to do this for other people, you want to know the best financial technology and how you can best use it to help support your business. So that is what this channel is all about. So if that sounds good, please make sure that you are subscribed. Now, I'm going to show you how to create invoices in QuickBooks Online. This video is being recorded in August of 2025. And so this is using the new QuickBooks interface. So the user interface for QuickBooks Online has changed recently, and they are going to be pushing out this interface to all users very soon. So I want to make sure that you know how to do this and some things have moved around a little bit. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and hop into QuickBooks Online right now. So if you're in the dashboard of QuickBooks Online, you're going to want to go to the sales area. So you can do that a couple different ways. You can go up here to the icon, the little step icon to sales and get paid. And then over here on the left hand side, you can click on invoices. You can also hop up here under the create section and just go straight to create customers invoice. Um, let's go ahead and just go through the, the steps here. So go to sales and get paid and then invoices. This is going to take you to kind of the invoice page. This is where you can see everything that's outstanding. You can see who's paid you in the past, whether things have been deposited, if they've been viewed or not, which is really helpful. But what I'm going to teach you guys today is how to create an invoice. So you're going to go to this box here and click create invoice. Invoicing template is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, there's going to be your information up here at the top. This is going to be pulling from your settings in your company settings when you set up your QuickBooks account. So this is going to be your business address and your business email and phone number. The first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to add a customer. So invoices are the things that we send to our customers when we want to get paid. So we have to have a customer first. So I'm just going to put in here a sample customer. You can set up customers on their own or you can set one up straight from here. So if you want to add a new customer, you can add one. So we maybe let's just add one for the fun of it. Let's do ABC company and their email address is hello at abccompany.com and we can save that now the email address is important because whatever email address you put in that is where if you choose to send your invoice through the system it's going to default to this first email address here. Now you can add a CC and a BCC if you would like to, which is a nice feature. If you don't want an email sent to this invoice, to that email address, then you may not want to put it into the system. Okay. Um, so invoice numbers are going to be automatic. That's going to be whatever the last invoice number was. It's going to automatically populate with the next available invoice. And then you can choose your terms. So this means like, when do you want your customer to pay you? Do you want them to pay you right when they get the invoice? That would be due on receipt. Or if you want the net total of the invoice to be due in 10 days, 15 days, 30 days, or 60 days. So what QuickBooks does allow you to do is it does allow you to create custom terms, but you can't do it right here in the screen, which I think is a little bit of a missed opportunity here. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So let's go back to the dashboard. You're gonna go up to the gear icon. You're gonna go to your accounts and settings. You're gonna go to sales. And then up here at the top is preferred invoice terms. And if you click this edit, the pencil over on the side, and then you do a drop down, you're going to be able to do add new. So unfortunately, it's not available in the invoicing drop down. I think that's a little, again, a little bit of an oversight. But if I wanted to do um, due on 30th, I could have this be due by a certain day of the month and I could do the 30th. Let's just click save and save. 
Uh, purpose, this is not something I've ever used before, but this is kind of a new field. It's hidden, the customer doesn't see this. Tags are also hidden. This is something that like we, as an internally as a company might want to use tags. Um, we can talk about tags in a separate video. I thought they were going away, but they're still here. Um, so what we want to do is we want to provide um, what is what did we sell or what are we selling to this person? So um, let's create some, this is a media company, so let's create media services. And then we're going to create a description. And this is customizable. I'm going to show you guys how you can customize what we see here, but let's just throw something in here first. Video creation for campaign. And the rate is $5,000. And we can add other products and services. We can remove those line items. We can do quantity and you know quantity times rate. I'll show you how to customize these line items because certain businesses want to have different things show on the invoice. And then you can edit your payment options. So how do you want your customer to be able to pay you? Maybe you don't wanna collect credit cards and then you only want them to do um, a bank transfer, for example. If that's the case, you could put this on there. Maybe you're okay taking PayPal. If it's a creative service, maybe you wanna add on tips. Maybe that's something you wanna be able to do. That's kind of a newer feature. And then um, here's another new feature. You can have the invoice total. If you wanna take a deposit, um, you could potentially do that. Deposit amount, maybe you want a 50% deposit and you want that to be on bank and you want that deposit to your main checking. If you want a discount, you can. It's pretty easy to do. You can do it on a percentage or a dollar amount. If you want a shipping fee, you can put that on there. And then if you want late fees. So this is something where you can default charge uh, for late fees. So this can be um, a flat amount, like $100 for a late fee, or you can do like, like 1%. Um, so let's say we want to do 1% once per invoice, not an upfront flat one-time period. You can also set up an automatic grace period if you want to. Maybe that's a five-day grace period. All of this could be set up and customized, which I think is pretty cool because then it can automatically do that for you. Um, you can adjust the design, which is great. You could use the template that they have. You can upload your logo. You can change the color scheme. I'm not going to change that right now. And then you can also schedule this to go out. So this can be a recurring invoice. You also have this new recurring payment option, which is pretty great. This is where you can basically, you have to set up a recurring payment and you determine the interval that it's recurring, but your customer will have to accept it. So um, they have to basically approve that um, charge, which I think is makes sense. Um, so you might just need to make sure that you've communicated with your client to, for them to expect that if you, like maybe if you've signed an agreement that like it's $5,000 a month for a year or something like that, then you need to make sure that that's, you probably have a contract supporting that and then the recurring payment would be set up this way. Um, so that's pretty great that that is all able to be set up. That just shows you some of the customization that can be done. Um, now, since we set up the recurring payment, there's now this checkbox that says this is a one-time payment um versus like a recurring a recurring so now you can see first payment total recurring payment total i'm just going to take the recurring payment off so we can see what just a normal invoice looks like and you can print it later or you can send it later and then you can also have it send invoice reminders as well so this gives you a couple options you can have a reminder three days before the due date on the due date and three days after the due date you could set up all of these if you wanted them to. So you've got a lot of a lot of choices here between like customization on what you'd like to see on the invoice. This is where you can actually modify these columns here. So maybe you don't want, maybe you want a service date and you can take that off. If you're a product business, you probably wanna have your SKU on your invoice going out. Um, so that if somebody wants to rebuy that same thing, they know exactly that the SKU matches what's supposed to match, or maybe you use purchase orders, for example. Um, so you can turn that off if you're just providing regular services. If you don't want a description, you can modify that. Um, if you don't want some of this to show, you can 
take it out. You can also create custom fields as well. Um, so um, I'm not going to do that because I need to save my invoice, but you can create custom fields. Um, so there's a lot of customization that can happen here. I think that it's pretty helpful. Like if you're doing services, you probably don't need to ship to area and maybe you could take out the terms if you just have a due date instead and you'd prefer that that's up to you you could take it out so yeah lots of things that you can do there let's just kind of let's save we can look at the payer view here so this is what the payer sees when they are going to get this invoice so they're going to get an email that comes in that they can click on and it will say you know, pay your invoice. And then they have this button here that says view invoice. And so the PDF view of that, so it has your bill to address, your invoice details over on the side. Here's the information about the product and services and the description and then deposit and the balance due, and then they can view and pay. And then that payer view is just that deposit amount that we set up. If we wanna go back, and then we say, actually, we just want it all paid in full at the beginning. We don't wanna take a deposit. Then we can turn that off and let's just check that out. And then it's there, let's save that. And over here, the payer view would be the full $5,000. Um, and then this is what the email looks like when it comes in. So they've got, this is kind of nice. So you can preview if you're working on it and you're trying to like make sure you know, like what is the customer actually gonna see? This is the email that they get. This is after they click this view and pay, they will go here and then they will go. And if they wanna view the invoice further, this is that PDF view. If you want to make an attachment as well, you can also put a memo on here. It's always gonna tell you if it's hidden. So this is the note to the customer that would show up on the actual PDF um, view. And if you have any attachments, so let's say you charge your customer because you traveled and you um, are you know, getting reimbursed for your travel and you need to put your hotel bill on there and maybe you know some receipts for some meals or something like that you want to pdf those into a document and then you can attach those to the invoice here um, sometimes people like to see like time sheets attached to invoices so you could do that here as well um, but basically anything that you need attached to the invoice you can attach that in a pdf so we're not going to send this because this is a fake email address but it might actually be a real email address i don't know so but when you're ready to send you would go to to review and send and then it's the invoice has been saved but you can text it to your customer some people like that I recently hired somebody for a party and I would have really appreciated just a text invoice because I get things get too lost in my personal email so that would have been nice for me being a customer um, so it's about kind of knowing your customer and you can ask them in the sales process if they prefer text or email but most businesses are going to want emails um, um, just kind of FYI on that. And then um, you th you have to check this. I have my customer's permission to set, send invoices by text. So that's a good way to remember, yeah, you need to ask them if that's okay before you do it. And then um, over here, you can modify your message. You have options here. You can ask their um, QuickBooks AI to rewrite it for you. So if you want this to be more friendly, the verbiage will be, friendly um, or if you want it to be rewritten you can ask them to rewrite it um, so you know you can play around with that and then anything you can change the subject here but this is where you can customize the message that actually goes out and then all you need to do is send your invoice that's a pretty simple overview of the quickbooks invoicing module hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to use it how to create an invoice in quickbooks online how to send it and how to customize it specifically for your clients needs so if you have any questions on the invoicing please make sure to put them in the comment section below and remember 
remember that QuickBooks also has the ability to see if somebody has viewed the invoice if you send it through the platform. So it'll tell you if they have viewed it, if they opened it. Um, and then once it is paid through the QuickBooks system, you get notification of that as well. Keep in mind that QuickBooks has its own payment processing. So when, when a customer uses QuickBooks to pay for an invoice, like an ACH or a credit card, that is going through the QuickBooks Merchant Services account. Now, because of our special relationship with Intuit, we do have slightly better rates on those merchant services accounts than you would get just signing up for it on your own. So if you want to get those rates, you can actually email us. The email is info at financialtechlab.com and we can get you better rates than what you would get if you were just on your own. We're here to help you out. So I hope that this video has been very helpful. If you are thinking about needing QuickBooks Online, you don't have it yet, and you are curious how the invoicing works, you can go to financialtechlab.com slash QBO to get our one year 30% off discount there. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions or if I didn't answer anything about invoicing, please put them in the comment section below and I will read all of your comments. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.